right, gang, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the idea of power as it relates to science. So what we're going to do really fast is review the concept of work, introduce the concept of power using a few examples, and then solve some power calculations using the equation power equals work divided by time. So let's get going. What we've been talking a lot about lately is this whole idea of work. And we've been going over how the scientific definition of work is much different than what what we use normally in in day-to-day -day language uh, so when we're in science we're and we talk about work what we have is that there is a force that's being applied to something that causes it to move and when we're doing those calculations involving work we take the amount of that force in newtons and multiply it by the distance in uh, in, in meters so let's take that idea of work and take it one step further which is what we get with power so when we talk about power in science, what we mean is the rate that we're doing work. So in other words, um, if I can do the same amount of work faster, I'm more powerful. Okay, or so uh, let's let's go over that a little bit. So let's say we've got a push-up contest, and we've got two students who are involved in this push-up contest. Student A, uh, 150 pounds. Student B is 200 pounds. Both of them have the same arm length. Both of them do 10 push-ups in 10 seconds. Now, which student is more powerful? Well, let's, let's think about this because remember, power is the amount of work done per unit of time. Um, so if I look at this, both of them have the same arm length. So when it comes to work, okay, they're, they're both moving the same distance, both do the same amount of push-ups, and it takes them both 10 seconds. So what's the difference here? Well, if I look at that, student A has a, hundred and f a weight of 150 pounds, student B has a weight of 200 pounds, it's going to take student B a lot more force to push him or herself up um, compared to student A. So because student B does more work per unit of time, they're more powerful. All right, so same same scenario this time. We have student A who with arms that are 75, uh, 75 centimeters long. Um, student B with arms that are 60 centimeters long. Uh, both of them weigh 180 pounds. Both do 10 push-ups in 10 seconds. So who's going to be more powerful? So once again, if I look at this idea of power equaling work uh, per unit of time, um, both of them do do their push-ups in the same amount of time they do the same amount of push-ups um, but if you look at this student a student a has longer arms so when it comes to work in order student a is going to do more work to do a push-up because they have to carry that weight a longer distance so in this case student a is more powerful because they do more work per unit of time all right next one in this case once again, they both weigh 180 pounds, same arm length, but this time student A does 10 push-ups in 10 seconds, student B does 10 push-ups in 7 seconds. So who's going to be more powerful here? Well, if I look at this, because weight and arm length are the same, the amount of work is going to be the same. Um, but what's different here? Well, if I look at this, I see that the time is different. Okay, Student A, it takes 10 seconds to do, uh, to do 10 push-ups. Student B, it only takes seven seconds. So student B is doing more, or is doing the same amount of work in a faster time. So that would make student B more powerful. All right, and here's the last example. Same scenario. This time we have student A doing 10 push-ups in 10 seconds. Student B doing five push-ups in 10 seconds. So who's more powerful? Well, in this case, Student A is the one, he does five more push-ups. He does a total of 10, uh, which means he's doing more work uh, per unit of time than student B. So let's look at, when we're talking about power, let's look at the units that we have there. So remember, power is the work done per unit of time. So when we think about work, okay, in a previous video we talked about that, work is a, a newton per meter okay or not a newton per meter a newton meter um so and a newton meter is equal to a joule so a joule per second is how we measure power well joule per second gets a little 
weird at times. So what we do is we say one joule per second equals one watt. And uh, if I'm looking at that, one watt, just to kind of give you an idea, is the power needed to lift an apple one meter in one second. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but it gives you an, I gives you an idea. Okay, so here's the equation that we're going to use um, with when we're calculating power. So power is equal to work divided by time. Um, but another way of looking at that, because we have um, talked about how to solve for work, you know that work can equal force times distance. So along with power equaling work divided by time, we can also solve it as saying force times distance divided by time. So let's do some examples. Now if you watched the, the previous work video, we used this as an example, but we're going to add a little bit of information to it to make it work for power. So it, if it takes 20 seconds for a weightlifter to move a 2,000 Newton bar 2.5 meters above the ground, well, how much power is needed in order to do that? Let's take a look at that and kind of organize our ideas using the guess method. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm given, uh, or I know that force is equal to 2,000 newtons. I'm also, it's also given to me that the distance is 2.5 meters and the time is 20 seconds. What's unknown is the power. So if I have force, distance, and time, but I don't have power, the equation that I'm going to use is force times distance divided by time. So if I go in here and I start substituting in to my equation, I'm going to say my power is equal to 2,000 newtons for my force, multiplied by 2.5 meters for the distance, divided by 20 seconds, and when I calculate that all out, I end up with 250 Newton meters per second, which is the same as 250 joules, which would be the answer to my question. All right, here's another one. Once again, you've seen this before, but let's say it takes half a minute to pull this or to pull some object 0.15 kilometers with 200 newtons of force. So if that's the case, how much power is needed uh, for this job? So if I look at this, once again, organizing my thoughts using the guess method, I'm given that I have 200 new, or a force of 200 newtons. But the distance that I'm originally given is 0.15 kilometers. The problem with that is that when I do the calculations for work and also for power, I can't use kilometers. I need to have my distance in meters. So I know that there's 1,000 kilometers in every meter. And when I do the math there, if I have 0.15 kilometers, that gives me 150 meters. And kind of the same idea with time. In this case, the time is uh, 0.5 minutes. Well, I can't have that in minutes. It has to be in seconds. So I convert 0.5 minutes into 30 seconds um, to give me my time. So um, now I'm trying to find power. Uh, if I have all that information trying to find power, then the equation that I'm going to use is power is equal to force times distance divided by time. I go in there. I substitute my... 200 newtons for force, my 150 meters for distance, and 30 seconds for time. And when I get all of that, I end up with a thousand joules of power. Whew. Okay, that was fast. Um, if if you need to, it's okay to go back, review this, um, kind of look at things again. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. But what I'm, what I'm hoping is that after watching this, you once again understand that idea, that basic concept of work, and you can then take that idea of work and relate that to power as being power is the, the rate that work is done, and then be able to solve uh, equations involving power, work, and time. Uh, using those things that I that I gave you. So if you have any questions, let me know.